Hello. I'm like, bleh. Anyway, so um, my friend Robin, we were roommates um, in college. Hi, Robin, if you're watching this. You don't have to watch this whole thing because I know you know the story. And um, I was I was so crazy back then. I was like, I'd like write, well, I still write short stories that like have no real ending that just like end abruptly. But she kept this old story that I wrote and it is so absurd. She wanted me to, um, you want, you, Robin, you wanted me to post the story on my YouTube channel. So I will. Um, anyway, I'm going to read it, uh, it is crazy, and I, uh, no, no one's gonna watch this, but I'm just gonna read it, anyway. So, ahem, the sunlight shone upon Janie's face, making her sleeping head shake no, in search of shade which came in the form of her hand, covering her face, yet also awaking her from her slumber. She sat up in bed, eyes casting upon her room at the nunnery. It was small by most people's standards, but big for the standards of the nunnery, where she was training to enter the sisterhood that was married that was married to Jesus. Remembering what she was here for, she glanced to her right above her bed at a wooden crucifix. Behind Janie, where her pillows were, where her head had lain, where one conventionally hangs the crucifix above one's bed, was a window. Janie lingered in bed, thinking about the night before. She was in deep shit, deep shit with the sisters for smoking weed. It brings me closer to God, she thought, but then she wondered why nobody had been in to check on her when she hadn't gone to breakfast and worship. Deep inside, Janie knew she wasn't cut out to be a sister. Deep inside, she knew a sister wouldn't crave a life of excitement like she did wouldn't be picky as she was, and wouldn't be as unhappy as she was, most of all. In a sudden fury of guilt, Janie reached for her cell phone to call her father, who had urged her to become a nun. However, when she looked at her cell phone, she saw a number that she didn't recognize, with a Las Vegas area code. She looked at the number, the number three, her lucky number appeared three times, urging her on to return the call. She called it. Ring, ring, ring. Hello, I'm not here right now, but if you want me to be there, leave a message. After which some music played and the beep was heard. Hello? This is Janie Walsh. Um, is that you, Katie? It sounds like you. If it's not you, then excuse me, whoever this is. But if this is Katie, call me back. Suddenly, a knock was heard at the door, and Janie hung up and started making her bed. After she made her, her bed, she ran to the door, opening it, only to see one of the nuns who had already began to walk away. Sister! Janie cried. The nun slowly turned around, and with an unreadable expression began to walk back toward Janie. Janie, I was wondering why you didn't come to worship, and why you've been acting strangely recently. Oh, said Janie, knowing exactly what the nun was talking about. When I went back to the farm to visit my family, I spent a lot of time with my brother and his friends about town. I experienced so many different things, and I guess I just started thinking, dot dot dot, differently. Dear, that is why we don't allow girls to become nuns from one day to the next. Life changes, one dear. 
Now tell me about that boy that you met. One would hope he's not a bad influence. There is no boy. No boy? Then what has brought this change in behavior, dear? I, I have a yearning to see the world. Which you can do as a nun, the elderly nun said kindly. Janie hesitated. Yes, but I want to see it in a different way. I... Dot, dot, dot. Janie looked at the elderly woman across from her, sizing up the probability that she may have a heart attack once she was sure that the woman was of good constitution. She continued, I want to be with a man. There was a small, awkward silence as one virgin said to the other, Perhaps the nunnery really is the best place for you, then. It will calm your fiery spirit. Janie smiled at this and said, That's it, my fiery spirit. I must go tend my duties, child. I will return tonight, and you can tell me what you have decided. As she said this, Janie could hear the pity in her voice. Janie opened a window and lit up. Once she was nice and high, she laid on the bed with her legs on the wall, staring up at the beautifully carved crucifix. She thought about the life of the sun, and about her feelings, and about how she could make her feelings right in lieu of the Lord's only son having died for the sins of the world. One part of Janie felt guilty and wanted not to sin at all, or as little as necessary, because she couldn't bear to cause this man pain and suffering. Then there was another part of her. Well, he can't have died in vain. Maybe I should sin a little, dot, 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 more. She barely thought the thought when the Las Vegas number called her phone again. She picked it up. Hello, sugar said a sultry voice on the other line, one that Janie recognized immediately. Katie! What have you been up to, Janie? I gotta tell you, I found your number in my high school address book. I was talking to Lisa the other day. She told me you were a nun. And I said, not the Janie I know, not the Janie who blew. You know I never did that. That was a rumor, Janie said. With the same wine she thought she had left in high school, she was being honest. Oh, I know. I set her straight. Lisa said you did that anyway. Lisa said you did that anyway. Not me. Janie's bad mood got even worse. Great, she said sarcastically. Then getting back on track, she said, I am a nun. Well, not yet. Officially but I am staying at a convent. What are you doing these days? Are you in Las Vegas? I am, sister. I'm not a nun yet. Whatever. What are you doing in Las Vegas? I'm working with Celine Dion on her show. No. Katie giggled. Sure am. That's amazing. Do you think I could come visit you? Sure, replied Katie. Like, soon? Like, now? I need some time to mold things over, said Janie. Yeah. They then said their goodbyes. That night, Janie packed her meager belongings and left the nunnery. She traveled to the City of Sin, where she found out Katie wasn't actually working on a Celine Dion show, as she had told her, but was actually working as a showgirl but had thought it uncouth to tell a nun in training because of the somewhat scandalous reputation the movie Showgirls had given her chosen career. And that's the end of my story. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I am crazy, and I hope you liked it. Bye.